Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot microservices in Splunk Observability Cloud. I used to be a site reliability engineer, and in this troubleshooting scenario, I'm gonna play the role of an engineer who's new to the company and new to Splunk. I'm responsible for a set of microservices that comprise my company's e-commerce application. And in order to support these microservices, my team implements an on-call rotation. And as luck would have it, I got paged in the middle of the night. And the alert that I received is coming from our e-commerce application's payment service. And based on the alert details, it looks like some customers are not able to check out. Now my first step after receiving the alert is to navigate to Splunk Observability Cloud. From here, I'm going to navigate to the APM page. I'm going to adjust the time window to the last four hours. And I also want to confirm that the correct environment is selected, which in this case it is. The payment service is within the online boutique US environment. And directly from the homepage of APM, we get a set of metrics that clearly show the payment service is encountering errors. In this chart, you can see the payment service error rate is at about 80%. And using these charts, along with adjusting the time frame window, would allow you to determine when the error rate started increasing for the payment service. Knowing when the error rate began increasing is always useful when you're troubleshooting. But as a next step, I'm going to take a look at the service map for the online boutique. In the service map, you can see all of the microservices that comprise the online boutique. It's worth noting that this service map is dynamically generated, so we didn't have to manually configure each of these nodes in the service map. And the directed edges between microservices also indicate the latency between those services. And you can see in the service map that there appears to be an error from the front end to the payment service. Any of the nodes that are highlighted red in the service map indicate errors are occurring in that service. And this Buttercup Payments node is actually an inferred service, so it's not within our control, it's a third-party payment service. But since we know our application is making HTTP calls to that service, we can collect response codes and latency from the requests, and that might help us troubleshoot later on. I'm going to click on the payment service. I'd like to know if the failed requests have anything in common with each other. To determine that, I'm going to open up this feature called Tag Spotlight. The top chart shows me requests and errors over time for the payment service. Tag Spotlight is a really powerful feature because what it does is it breaks down performance metrics by tag values found in spans. And in these cards on the bottom, you can see for a given tag, the values of that tag. So as an example, if you take a look at the HTTP status code tag and its values, there's two values, 401 and 200. And the 401 value is associated with 23,000 errors, which makes sense because a 401 status code is an error. So Tag Spotlight makes it easier to identify issues because it highlights tag values that are associated with errors, helping you drill down to the root cause. So let's continue looking at these tags and see if there's anything that stands out. Well, one thing that I noticed for the version tag is that version 350.9 has zero errors whereas version 350.10 has 23,000 errors. That's a pretty strong indication that that version might be problematic. And going back to what I was saying when we were looking at the APM homepage and the performance metrics over time, if you identified when uh, the error rate increased, you would want to cross-reference that with the deployment time of this version 350.10 to further confirm that uh, the deployment of this version introduce uh, problems. So we have an indication of what is causing the error rate to increase, but we don't know why. To determine why version 350.10 is causing errors, we need to look at the logs of the payment service. If you look at the bottom of the page, there's two windows here called Related Infrastructure, 
and related logs. These are types of related content that will show up when you're browsing your services in APM or your infrastructure in the infrastructure management page. So this is a link to log observer that is already filtered for the payment service. And similar to the service map, related content links are automatically generated. They don't require manual configuration in order for them to show up. So I'm gonna select it. From here, we can see the number of log entries over time, and then we can actually look at the logs table to see individual log entries. Now I wanna look for errors in the logs, and I can see that there is a field called severity, and it looks like there is an error log level. So I'm going to filter on the severity field and select error. and then I'll select Run Search. Now I can review all of the log entries where the severity of the log level was error. Let's take a look at the first entry here. We get a nice summary of the log message as well as the keys and values that are contained in this log entry. And when I'm looking at this entry, I can see that the version is 350.10. And the message of this log is failed payment processing through Buttercup Payments, invalid API token. And then it shows the name of the token. Remember that when we were looking at the service map, Buttercup Payments was an inferred third-party service that we're interfacing with. And judging by the name of the token, it looks like this token was intended for the test environment, not our production environment. Now that we know what's causing the error rate to increase in version 350.10, we can make a decision to either roll back that version or deploy a hotfix. We were able to identify this error pretty quickly by just navigating to the service map, selecting payment service, then going into the tag spotlight for the payment service and identifying tags that were associated with errors. Tag spotlight helped us identify what was causing the issue. We then navigated to log observer to identify why the issue was occurring. Now, although this troubleshooting workflow was quick, it could be even quicker with the help of the Splunk AI Assistant. Let's navigate back to the home page and use the AI Assistant to identify the same error in the payment service. I can activate the AI Assistant by navigating up here and selecting this icon. Using natural language, I'm going to ask it what's wrong with the payment service. Then I'll just need to wait while the AI Assistant analyzes my infrastructure, and determines what's going wrong. I sped this part up so we're not watching paint dry, but it took the AI assistant about 16 seconds to begin writing a response, which is still pretty quick given our environment. Okay, so let's take a look at the output from the assistant. I'll scroll up here, and it looks like it correctly identifies that the payment service has an error rate of around 80%. It also identifies that the payment service has high latency metrics. And then it also sees that the most common error is a 401 unauthorized HTTP status code, which is correct because when we were looking at the tag spotlight and I showed you the values of the HTTP status codes, uh, it was 401 and 200 that showed up. And it also says that it's seen invalid requests in the error message. And then finally, it identifies what is causing the issue, which is version 350.10 of our payment service. In the summary, it kind of clues you into what you should be investigating, the authentication and authorization mechanisms for the payment service, and then it's associating that with version uh, 350.10. Let's go a step further and see if it can identify the same error in the payment service logs. And obviously, we can't do something like this with ChatGPT because it doesn't have access to the data in our environment and it shouldn't have access, but the Splunk AI Assistant does have access to the data in our environment and that allows it to properly troubleshoot. And the AI Assistant does not answer questions that are unrelated to observability, so you can't ask it things like who's going to the Super Bowl or something like that. Additionally, the restricted training set also helps reduce the risk of hallucinations and similar problems. I sped this part of the video up 
but it took about 33 seconds for the AI assistant to start writing a response. Let's take a look at the output. And we can see that it directly identifies the error message. It includes uh, failed payment processing through the uh, Buttercup payment system. And then if we scroll down and look at the summary, it says that the error indicates a failure in processing payments through the Buttercup payments uh, third-party uh, service due to an invalid API token. So it took two queries to the AI assistant for it to identify not only what was causing the errors, but also why those errors were occurring. In the previous workflow, we had to generally know uh, where to go to identify what was going wrong and why it was going wrong. But with the AI assistant, you can be an engineer who's not familiar with Splunk and maybe not familiar with all parts of your environment, but you can ask questions about any aspect of your environment to the assistant. And it can do a lot of the heavy lifting to guide you towards the right troubleshooting steps. Not to mention, it could potentially do it faster than you could troubleshoot manually. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to follow the link on the screen or contact your salesperson to get a free trial of Splunk Observability Cloud. Thanks for watching.